welcome age of vintage society. Irish-born beautiful Maureen O'Hara is no doubt one of the biggest stars to emerge from the golden age of Hollywood. Her talent was so felt that she was christened the Queen of Technicolor. Right or wrong, this screen empress has her issues off the screen. But like other famous heroines, she just has her way of navigating peculiarity in life and career, from a secret marriage to onset hatred, love and secrets, especially one with John Wayne. Was Maureen O'Hara sleeping with John Wayne? With her exciting red hair and opulent green eyes, it's almost natural that Maureen O'Hara becomes not just a movie image, but takes her place as one of the primary beauties that the entertainment industry has ever produced. She was peculiar in her screen character, attracting a special aura to herself. You hardly could talk about her today without a corresponding appreciation of her uniqueness as a dramatic persona. Are you among those who thought she merited to be addressed as the crowned head of the Technicolor movies? You may not be wrong, because O'Hara was highly expressive of her talent and provided her fans with what they desired to see. Unfortunately, a few backstories tainted her image, mainly because of human weakness and other circumstances beyond her control. Luckily for the blazing Irish performer, she found a way to live above her adversaries and emerge victorious in almost all her struggles. This talented vocalist is today famous as an American actress after entering the state and in no time cemented her affiliation to American society by naturalisation. A nature-made redhead who became a movie sensation appearing in Western come adventurous movies, with her typecast as your classic loving but functional heroines, and thrilled Hollywood audiences of the 1940s through to the mid-1960s. Her auspicious career has been wonderfully linked to two great filmmakers who played an undeniable role in her career and personal life, director John Ford and enduring friend and mutual admirer John Wayne come in handy. But her association with John Wayne also raised some confusion among fans even as she was running her shows with some asking if there was anything other than screen engagement between the two, especially after watching the two take centre stage as a co-star in The Quiet Man production. Observers say the on-screen chemistry between the two and their mutual connection behind the camera may have caused the rumours that filled gossip media at the time, with some fans arguing that they were a real-life couple. There is something under the shadow, but it was kept secret, and it remained a secret until death, the widely believed rumour and speculation. Did you also hear that John Wayne's partner, Pat Stacy, got a letter from a lady who claimed she was Wayne and O'Hara's child? Before now, lots of fans concluded that the two were husband and wife, but how true is that assertion? Well, a new account about the life of the TV western legend John Wayne as put together by historian Scott Iman, titled John Wayne, The Life and Legend, may have put an end to that speculation, even though O'Hara had initially stated that she had no relationship with him other than a friend and professional colleague. Recall that the famous movie cowboy Wayne, who had married three women with numerous love affairs to his credit, was also said to have dated the like of Marlena Dietrich, but his elongated friendship with O'Hara was revealed to have taken a peculiar romantic turn. Having featured together in three films, Wayne and O'Hara significantly became good friends, but if what Iman wrote in his account is anything to go by, the duo had a long romantic relationship before and during his marriage with Pilar Palais, and was said to have always met at Wayne's Arizona ranch. O'Hara was born into a Catholic family in 1920 as Maureen Fitzsimmons in an area known as Beechwood Avenue near the Irish city of Dublin. In case you don't have an idea about her family background, O'Hara says she was born into the most remarkable and eccentric family that she could have possibly hoped for, being the second in line of six children of Charles and Marguerite Fitzsimmons and remarkably the only red-haired child in her family, her star was foretold as a great personality. A story was shared of how five years old O'Hara had received a spiritual victor at her parents' house, a woman who brandished her prowess 
as one who can foresee the future. Her strange prediction for little Maureen was that she would be great beyond the show of Ireland, and famous woman around the world. The prediction also came with a strange addendum, that the fame would slip through her fingers one day. I also heard that both predictions were accurate in her life. Her love for acting began as early as she can remember, growing up in Dublin. She got an early acting lesson from the Rathmines Theatre Company at age ten, and started at the Abbey Theatre four years later. Three years of hard work saw Little O'Hara winning her first leading role at the theatre, but before that one materialised came a juicy offer by an American entertainer, identified as Harry Richmond, who was convinced she should leave stage work for film production. So he showed up at her family home in Dublin and persuaded her to do a screen test. Her first screen test was adjudged unacceptable. That early setback was worrisome for the young lady, who was very inexperienced at the time. She was put through a sophisticated studio make-up procedure that did not reflect her true beauty and talent. Feeling miserable and self-doubting, she regretted momentarily her decision to leave stage work. Luckily, there was one person who looked beyond the camera fright and the brash facade. Charles Lawton saw promising talent in O'Hara and decided she would be good as his co-star. He also made a request which was contrary to what O'Hara thought. She thought she would be billed as Maureen Fitzsimmons, her real name, but Lawton maintained that it would be better if she changed the last name. That was it for the name Fitzsimmons becoming O'Hara, they appeared in Alfred Hitchcock's Jamaica Inn in 1939. That movie became her breakthrough role, but during filming O'Hara began dating a producer named George H. Brown. It seems the fellow was madly in love with O'Hara, even though she felt little about him. When another opportunity came for O'Hara, Brown did not think it was convenient for her to go to Hollywood to film the movie. Brown did everything he could to keep his girlfriend but O'Hara thought otherwise because she had her dream career to pursue. All these were happening within the same year, and Hollywood was beckoning. So she finds a way to move out. I heard that a day before she sailed to the US, she entertained several distressed calls from Brown, who felt so bad that she was leaving. He wanted to see her for the last time before she leaves. At least that was the message he sent to her, so she could come over. But when O'Hara arrived, she got a surprise wedding event. Perhaps out of shared love for him and the need to appease him so she can go to Hollywood, 19-year-old O'Hara observed the marriage proceeding. Unfortunately, she never knew that it was a trap that would turn back to haunt her, the reason she would always regret the decision she made that day. When she appeared in the creation of The Hunchback of Notre Dame and was immediately drafted into RKO Pictures in what appeared to be her first studio contract. The studio was disappointed when her husband Brown quickly publicised that clandestine marriage and it became a major publicity scandal with several gossip media chewing on the news. The unpleasant husband proudly told the media that he was joined in matrimony to Ireland's most promising ingenue at the time and studio executives did not find the embarrassing news funny. Stuck in a complicated situation that was much like between the devil and the deep blue sea, O'Hara would find a way to hit back and save her face and career. She came out with a punishing action. Since she was already part of the studio, it was only natural that she obeyed their instructions, and it made things easier for her to get out of a hasty marriage that she was willing to vacate. So, while in the US, O'Hara had her marriage annulled. Good riddance to bad rubbish. While Brown waited for his embarrassed bride to come back to Ireland, O'Hara has moved on, and they never saw themselves again. She only saw the foolish husband on their wedding day. For RKO, it seemed a new movie sensation had arrived. Not too long, O'Hara went on to accomplish a long and highly successful career. Sometime in the 1950s, O'Hara became more accustomed to adventures and western films, and one man who made her journey easier in this genre is her usual co-star, John Wayne. Their actions on screen were closely knitted enough to arouse curiosity. While she said Wayne is just a friend, Wayne's life story presented a clearer perspective on that affair. 
We were told that Wayne and O'Hara had a secret romantic life for almost twenty years. It seemed their affair began even before Wayne married his third wife, and would continue on and off and remarkably under cover. It was stated that until Wayne's death he was truly in love with O'Hara. But why didn't they marry? Those in the know believed that Wayne was afraid of O'Hara because he knew that she was a tough lady, and he preferred to marry softer women, women he thought he could control. They too surely had something strong between themselves, and by the time O'Hara got to learn about John Wayne's illness, struggling with cancer that was deteriorating fast, she was said to have promoted a course to ensure that Congress gave Wayne a Congressional Gold Medal before his demise. Recall that Wayne got that award before he gave up the ghost. That was 1979, the year Maureen O'Hara flew into talk before the House Banking, Finance and Urban Affairs Subcommittee on Consumer Affairs for a touching mission. Those present said her eyes were filled with sympathy for her close friend of many years, who was seriously ill. She was strong in the spirit in that emotionally fascinating moment to give her testimony, so that the President of the United States would approve John Wayne's honour. O'Hara's appeal was based on a need to stand for a dear friend. As she recalled memories of their long friendship, I beg you to strike a medal for Duke, she had begged, adding that, I feel that the medal should say just one thing, it should make John Wayne an American, she was quoted. A school of thought suggests that O'Hara may have been seriously affected by the double loss of her husband, Charles F. Blair, and Wayne, when her health devalued in depression for years. Once confronted to answer the reporter's question, O'Hara hinted that Wayne talked about her as one hell of a guy, which was for her a kind of compliment perhaps trying to let fans know that there was nothing more than mutual friendship between her and Wayne, she noted that her husband Blair was equally a good friend to Wayne. Their friendship has been there for years. She recalls that both Blair and Wayne enjoyed playing chess together, as Wayne frequently visited their home. Even though the two have steadily denied being in any kind of romantic relationship, friends and close colleagues believe that Wayne particularly loved O'Hara so much. O'Hara was shocked when a report of a plane crash hit her like a blow, as she heard that it took the life of her third husband, Blair. Years after, she told fans how she had disturbing reservations about what had occurred that day. O'Hara was in Ireland, her home country, when the incident took place, but some of the details from the people who called her that day prompted her to start investigating, because everything about it was strange. There is enough evidence to say that John Wayne's respect for Maureen O'Hara was real, and he often demonstrated it in his own words. She had played roles as his wife in some movies, but was more of an antagonistic partner most of the time. Talking about that, Wayne said there's virtually no role that would make O'Hara not appear lovely. Famous director John Ford was credited for trying to make her look unattractive in a few scenes, but like a goldfish, O'Hara's beauty has no hiding place, so it was impossible to make her not beautiful, according to Wayne. Sadly, when the news came that Wayne was hospitalised at UCLA Hospital, majorly blamed on his heavy cigarette habit, Maureen O'Hara, who has survived a major cancer incident, did not hesitate as she rushed down to be with him. Reports say on seeing his skinny look, O'Hara broke into uncontrollable tears a situation Wayne attributed to what he described as their lousy luck. The actress remained at his side for three days, to encourage and cheer him up by putting on her cheerful smile to raise his morale. On her departure, she still recalled the last words Wayne said to her. He did not fail to compliment her beauty, even with his condition, when he said, "'That's a gorgeous coat. It looks beautiful on you,' referring to clothes she wore. O'Hara was such a gem of a beauty and talent. In the course of her exciting career, one powerful man who got an overwhelming interest in her is John Ford. They became recurrent collaborators and worked together on five films. During this period, something was fishy about their business partnership. The director seemed infatuated with O'Hara, that he was glued to her as if a spell was cast on him. Although O'Hara was said to have rejected his advances, he didn't give up on her. 
Rather, his feelings wavered between passion and absolute violence. Observers say, after writing drunken romantic letters that did not seem to interest much focused O'Hara considerably, he decided to try it through the wrong means. I can't say how I got his lyrics, but some of them read, God, I long for you. Your face is constantly in my dreams. When he could not get a yes, and knowing that O'Hara is a tough lady, he incredibly became hostile against her, and shamefully doing a face-punching publicly. He hit O'Hara while they were on a movie set together, and that was how cruel he became. Maureen O'Hara died peacefully in her sleep in 2015 of natural causes at her home, according to an official report. Not only were people concerned about what was going on between Maureen O'Hara and John Wayne, but did Barbara Stanwyck and Tallulah Bankhead have a romantic affair? Watch this video and figure it out.